my view on the sort of uh, philanthropy side. At one point recently, we had some people over for dinner, and they were asking about fundraising. And I said, you know, I've never failed in fundraising. And my wife laughed um, because I've been shut down so many times. It's just it's ridiculous. But I think you have to look at every opportunity um, as an opportunity to share something you're passionate about. And so whether or not you, you, you end it with a donation or not is kind of not the point. It's you've planted a seed, and you've hopefully awakened in someone a curiosity or a sense of that. So I wouldn't avoid anybody. Um, you said graffiti arts? Yeah, it's um, graffiti artists doing live performances, uh, two on two B Boy Battle, um, crumping and tutting, and a mm. house performance and a hip hop crew performance. And April when? What's the date? April 12th. It's at Revival. Okay. That's yeah. pretty soon. It's very soon. <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of a special events program at George Brown, so you have like two months to put it on from start to finish. Okay. Yeah. So is this something you'll be involved in once, or will there be a recurrence uh, of this? Hopefully our group will continue doing it after we graduate. So what I, what I would suggest is you use this one as a, a cultivation, rather than, like, you're, not, you're probably not going to close donations. I, I couldn't close a donation that fast for us, and we've been around for 50 years. Um, rather, it would be worth looking at you know, who might get involved. Um, if you look at what Scotiabank did with the Contact Festival, there's a real... Um, They've taken some big risks around that festival that do not fit with their corporate brand. So I think a lot of people have this misperception as well that corporations drive strategy. My experience, corporations and supporters do not drive strategy at all. In fact, often to get a government grant, you have to pretzel yourself a lot more than with a corporate grant, which is kind of ironic. Um, so the banks would be a good avenue. But um, yeah, I would, I would basically just sort of scan the horizon and say, well, who do you want next year to support you and get them out this year so they can see it? Because it'll be very hard. Is this the first year this has been put on as well? Yeah, this is yeah. in particular. So it'll also be hard to get a grant for something in its first year of operation. So really use this as an opportunity to bring some, some thinkers in to see it. Great. Thank you. You might also look at Flow and Now Magazine, because that way at least you can promote what you're doing. And they might give you that promotion. Michael has his hand up over there. Hi, my name is Michael. Um, so in talking specifically about philanthropy with corporations, um, I've, I've looked at some websites and looked at some, some um, various sources. And really, it seems that for the emerging artist, it's rather difficult to get sort of in the door because they expect you to be a company. They expect you to have right. a certain amount of experience that emerging artists necessarily don't have. So I'm wondering about approach. And I'm wondering if the way forward is really this sort of, you know, this long courtship process that needs to start sort of now? Or is it worth applying anyway to get the name in the door? Or, or sort of what's, what, what would you recommend for, for, for that, for applying? Is it, is it just put the application in? Or is it wait for a bit, wait to have a company and then do it? Or, you know, talk to people now for five years from now? Yeah, I, I don't, waiting, waiting I don't think is a good idea. And, Five minutes, okay. Um, in terms of fundraising, I think you want to start by looking, so I'm just going to ignore the corporate topic just for a second. If you want to look at the people that are already around you and try to figure out, okay, who do I know who might support? This already happens, so this is not uh, rocket science at all. Um, and most of you are probably doing this if you've done any projects. Um, generally, the people around you are connected to people who are connected to people who are connected to people. So really, as, a, as an emerging company, you can have more success mining that network, then you will suddenly going, okay, so maybe Scotiabank will give me 50,000 bucks, because that, that will take you five years <laughs> to get there. Um, so you, you'd be better off in terms of individual donors growing at that pace. And one of the challenges I think facing the city right now is how do we provide uh, heightened access for emerging artists to private individuals? Because what tends to happen largely, and this is you know, a healthy part of the sort of uh, evolution of the arts sector. Um, organizations that have been around for a long time, like ours, um, have a brand, reputation, legacy, history that means that we do suck a lot of attention up to us from those people. Um, that being said, because our needs are so great, for a lot of those people, they'd be very excited about the idea of world premieres and new artists and developing that. So we need to create a sort of a bit of a different um, accessibility package around that kind of idea, because I, I know, having talked to many of our big donors here, they would love that. And they probably would be much more interested in that than they would be in, in, in supporting our, 
uh, utilities costs. Um, I hope that none of them are watching the live stream. <laughs> um, on, on the corporation side, though, I think it, it really comes back to that figuring out, and you can find this out on the website, who's the person who drives the thing. Because one of the other differences on the corporate as compared to government is corporate have no staff. Like whereas the Toronto Arts Council has staffs and grants officers, but you're going to find in the corporate sectors are giving out an equivalent amount of money with two or three people instead of like 30 people. Um, so figuring out who those people are and making a personal connection to them is absolutely essential. Also figuring out with that network of support that you have around you already, is somebody connected to a company? I heard uh, just recently about a sponsorship at one of the dance schools. I, I won't name names so as not to betray confidences, but this school was talking to parents and discovered that two of the parents worked at, I don't remember if it was TD or Scotia, it was one of the big banks. And as a result, that bank ended up supporting that institution where the philanthropic priorities were not particularly aligned, but it was, again, knowing people in the right positions that could meaningfully influence the decision making. Any last question while we've got the two minutes here? <laughs> like you could, you could not register yourself and ask for money. You sort of have to register yourself and ask for money. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's a, that's a really tough one, and I, I don't envy people making that decision because there's a lot about charitable registration that doesn't work particularly for arts organizations. Um, so I've seen two models that work well in terms of charitable registry. There is the uh, low maintenance model where you find a couple of board members who are friends to sit on your board so that you have the charitable registration status. The, uh, the positive for that is you have the status and can get donations. The downside is generally those friends can't really be that helpful to you in any way outside of providing that access or that, that status. Um, the other model is thinking more about who could you bring to the board that could help you gain access to resources. And I think we fall in the bad habit as arts organizations in building boards of our artist friends. And our artist friends are our artist friends. So if we have a project coming up and we want to go out for drinks with some of our, some of our colleagues and talk about this idea we have and bounce ideas off, we already have access to that support base. Um, having a group around you of people who have access to some resources, whatever that might mean, um, is probably more important. Because generally, when I, when I find uh, a lot of smaller organizations in Toronto that are in mid-sector, mid, -sector, mid uh, uh, mid-life cycle, and you ask them who's on your board, it's a bunch of their friends who are artists, and then you say, well, are they providing you with meaningful artistic advice that's shaping what you do as an artist? They say no. They say, are they providing access to resources in some way? No. And you'll find most artists will just complain about this because they, they have to do minutes and they have to, you know, it's just such a pain in the butt to, to manage it. So I think thinking through that piece is important. There are private sector people who will make donations without charitable status. Corporations, it's almost, it's very difficult to get a corporation to make a donation without a charitable status just because that's one way that they narrow the, uh, the application pool is to say you have to be charitably registered. But there are private individuals that will do it, that will provide donations without, not of huge amounts, but, but significant.